since we already learned about the geometry, setting tool directions, lengthening the cut lines, the cut settings, and applying them, in the Profiling Basics video, I'm going to start from that point and continue on into some more advanced type profiling. I've also created and saved two blades for profiling, one for roughing and one for finishing. These are both the same physical blade. I just saved a copy as a finished blade with a lot higher feed rates since it won't be removing very much material. I already have the rough blade selected as active. And as we can see, I have my profile drawn and prepared, and I have my cut geometry drawn and prepared as well. In this first example, I'm going to rough out my profile in one pass. And I'll be using this as my reference point to follow this line. When I choose Cut Shape, the only setting that will change from what we've already learned is the material top. Because the reference point is not at the top of the material like it was in our basic video. Here, we need to know the distance from the bottom of our material to our reference point. This is the value we'll use as a material top. I already have my step over and step down set up, and I don't need a lead in and lead out, and my tool data is set to my active roughing blade. I was able to increase my down feed because I extended my cut line to a safe distance. Now I can click OK, select my profile, then my reference point, and the shape I want to cut to get my toolpath. And then I'll run simulation, and we can see that this profile is properly roughed into our material. And I could make a second pass for finishing if I wished. Instead, I'm going to take my profile and break it into two so that I can work from the top down on both sides. I'll start by breaking the geometry at the top. I'll choose Break from the Edit tab and select this top quadrant as the breakpoint. Since I'll be using that point as the reference point, when I apply my cut, I'm going to need to know the distance from the edge to that point so I can offset my follow lines. And when I measure, I see that it's 0.375. So now I can go to the geometry line and offset it by that amount. And then I can go to offset, set 0.375 as a distance, as a line, as geometry, OK, and offset it towards the inside. And I'll delete the original line to avoid confusion. And I'm going to need two of these lines because I have two profiles to follow in different directions. So I'm going to offset this line just a small amount. I'll use 0 0.003, about the thickness of a sheet of paper. And then I'll offset this line in both directions. And then I'll delete the original. And next, we'll have to set tool direction on all four of these geometries. I'll start with the left side, reverse and no, which would be this side of the profile and this side of this line. And the other side of the profile and the other line will need tool direction set to the right side so it works from top down. And we're going to need that profile to follow this line on its right side. Before I choose to cut the shape, I'm going to get the needed material top value. I'm going to measure from the bottom to the reference point of my profiles. We use the X value for our offset. Now we need the Y value, 1.125, when we cut the shape. All the rough cutting settings from the first example will be the same except for the material top. This is where I'd also add if I wanted to leave extra material from my roughing pass, 
I wouldn't leave a value in stock to be left. Just add it to the material top. I'll add in 0 .03 for extra material to remove later. If you typed it in like I did, you can just go to a different tab and back to see the calculation. I'll click OK to apply the cut, select the profile, my reference point, and then the line that I want to apply it to. And I'll choose Cut Shape and OK to cut the other side of the profile following the other line. Now if we go watch this in simulation, we may see that the blade misses some material at the very top because it shifts to one side and then the other. And this might be acceptable if you're planning on hand finishing anyway. If you want to complete machine finish, we'll have to change the geometries a little. I'm going to start over back to where we put a break in the profile and before we offset the follow lines. So in this third example, we're going to extend the ends of our profile line to make our blade overlap. I'm going to go to Layers and then Geometry to turn off one of the profile sides. I'll use the Find feature and select one of the profiles and then after it highlights I'll uncheck it to turn it off. I'll use Extend by Distance from the Edit tab and I'll use a value of at least half the thickness of the blade that I'm using. And then I'll pick the end of the line that I want to extend. Now I'll find the distance between the edge of the material to the end of the profile so that I can offset my follow line. As long as I'm here, I'm going to get my material top value as well. Next I can offset my follow line over the amount 0 0.305. Now I'm going to set tool direction and then cut this one profile while it's still easy to work with. So this will be a left side on both the profile and the line that it's going to follow. Now when I go to cut shape, I'm going to have to change the material top because the reference point has changed. So I'll enter the value and I'm going to add a little extra again for my roughing pass. And then I can click OK to apply the cut, which is much easier now that I only have one profile and one piece of geometry to work with. For the other side, I'll delete the dimensions I made, then I'll go and find and turn off the layer of the profile we already cut, so that I can extend the end of this profile as well which changes the reference point, so I'll find the values for that. And I'll use the X value to offset a new follow line for this profile. But first, I'll go to the Operations tab to turn off this operation so it's a little easier to see. I'm also going to go to Layers and turn off the other geometry line. I'll set Tool Direction to the right side and apply it to both my profile and my line, and there shouldn't be any values that I need to change and cut shape. The material top value is the same for this profile as well. So I can click OK and apply my cut. If I go and turn my geometries and my operations back on, I can run simulation and see that we've successfully overlapped and cut all the material. I'm also going to add a finishing pass to this example. I'm going to turn off the current operations for easier selections. I'll start by selecting my finishing blade and the only values I should have to change in cut shape is I'll make the material top actual again and then I'll tighten up my step over and step down amount. And now I can select my profile and carefully select its reference point before I select the proper line for it to follow. And again, I'll turn off that operation so that I can see that geometry when I go to apply the other profile cut. And now I can turn 
all of my cuts back on before I run and view it in simulation. This is where we'll see all the roughing passes and then the finishing passes with a smaller step over. Usually, at this point, we'd say if it looks good in simulation, go ahead and send it to the machine. But usually, when we have more than one profile cut in a program, we can get an error when we choose Send G-Code. This happens because the second, third, and consecutive cuts all have an extra toolpath in them. We can see this and fix it if we go to Layers and expand the toolpaths, and here we'll see that each cut is called a group. And in each group, there are many toolpaths. I'll turn them all off, except for the first group. And then if I expand that group, I can see all the toolpaths within it. And I can visually see on the screen each individual toolpath as I turn it on and off. But if I go turn on only the second group and expand it, we'll see that when I turn the first toolpath on and off, nothing happens. But all the rest of the toolpaths turn on and off as normal. So the problem is with the first toolpath in the second group. The cure is to turn all the toolpaths on in the group except for the first one. The same is true for all the following groups. If I go to the third group and turn on and off the first toolpath, we'll see it's an extra as well. So I'll turn on all the toolpaths within the group except for the first one again. We'll need to do this for every group except for the first group. We'll leave all the toolpaths turned on in the first group only. And now we should be able to go and send the program as normal. As a side note, when you send G-Code, it will turn on all toolpaths within all groups again. So if you choose to edit and or resend, you will need to go through and turn off the toolpaths again. Thank you for choosing Park Industries. Thanks.